Comedy songs, perhaps the hardest songs to write, but boy do audiences love them. And the secret behind writing comedy songs may not be what you think it is. It may surprise you. Let's start with the question, what makes comedy songs so difficult? Number one, being funny is hard, let's be real. And number two, the secret sauce, in order to land the humor well, you need to be surprising. The audience ideally doesn't see the joke or the punchline coming. In this way, music can be both a help and a hindrance. Music itself can create delight and be funny, and it can also augment the jokes in the words themselves. But the trap here is that once a pattern has been established in the music, it's a lot harder to surprise the audience because they know where the joke was before and that it's probably coming up again. So we constantly need to be finding new ways to create that surprise through musical alterations or extensions or differing the ways that we land the joke. Okay, hold up, we haven't even established this yet. What is a comedy song? A comedy song is simply a song in a show that is actively humorous. If the intent of the song is to delight the audience with humor, then it's a comedy song. Now, some people, especially those who are trained in the classical ways of writing musical theater, might argue with me here and say that a comedy song doesn't count as a comedy song unless it actively makes the audience laugh aloud. This is a wonderful thing and we should all strive for it, but I would argue that laughter isn't always the only goal because delight doesn't always translate into the body as laughter. So, where do comedy songs usually take place? The classical musical theater principle is as often as possible. And the caveat that I would add to that is, as long as the song is doing work for the show still and not acting as fluff. There needs to be intent and there needs to be value. Great spots to look at are moments of rest, moments where the tension needs to be released, moments that allow non-main characters to shine, and moments that might center a comedic character. There's also a tried and true spot, when done well, because it's pretty difficult to do, about halfway through act two, after the greatest moment of tension, that can act as kind of a last tension release and last hurrah for the audience before we wrap everything up the denouement. By the way, if you want to try your hand at writing some musical comedy in an environment that is warm and inviting and safe, then you should check out my flagship musical theater writing workshop course. Comedy songs are only one of six different types of songs that we write during that course, and it's the perfect environment to try out writing new song types and song styles in a place where you can feel comfortable being vulnerable and sharing your work for feedback. Plus, you get to do a whole bunch of collaboration during the songwriting process. Okay, now, how do we make things funny? Comedy is difficult, but here are a few basic principles. Number one, an expectation needs to be set up and then subverted instead of being fulfilled. Number two, surprise is your friend. Yes, this is indeed that secret sauce. And number three, the rule of threes is very useful. Set up, add to the setup and then subvert. Now, I will also add that the subversion is not necessarily an illogical conclusion. In fact, the logic of the world is super important to land in comedy. If the punchline feels illogical, the audience often feels duped and or confused. So instead of going for a subversion that's illogical, we want a subversion that is non-linear. Okay, let's look at some basic and very standard joke examples. <laughs> Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> Not a good joke. It works kind of because we expect banana, but instead we get orange, but it's a right turn instead of a forward step. It, we're still in the realm of fruit. It's not a very funny joke. How about a nice one-liner joke? The guy who cuts my hair was murdered with poison. It was barbicide. The joke works because it is wordplay and still very much in the world of the salon where he would cut my hair. Barbicide being the liquid that they put all their little utensils in to kill all the germs. It's a slight deep cut. And then my last silly example. There were two muffins in an oven. One muffin says, oh, it's getting hot in here. And the other muffin says, oh my god, a talking muffin. <laughs> It works because we feel the same way as the second muffin, right? There's talking muffins, that's 
silly, but it's all within the same world, but this muffin doesn't know why there's talking muffins, and nor do we. These subversions are very slight. They keep the world as set up by the joke, but they take a slight turn instead of taking that last step forward. They're not illogical, they're simply non-linear, and therefore a little surprising. Okay. So we need to be surprising and subvert any structures that we've set up all while maintaining the rules of the world. Does this mean that there's some sort of set structure for comedy songs in musical theater? Nope. You will see all different types of comedy songs if you look at the entire canon. Here are some examples. Cole Porter was the master of the funny, clever lyric. Some of his songs are laugh aloud funny and others are simply delightful. The song Friendship from Anything Goes is purely a delight, while You're the Top is both delightful and funny. Always True to You, Darling, in My Fashion is a great comedy song, especially when it's well performed. And Brush Up Your Shakespeare is another great comedy song, and it fits in that act two halfway through place, and it also ties in a trope to help land the comedy. It's that musical theater gangster trope. Stephen Sondheim's comedy songs are extremely varied in their style and the way that they are presented. You could look at That'll Show Him from Forum, which is a kind of a short one joke song. There's one of my favorite go-to examples, Getting Married Today, which is an absolute delight and has great comedic moments throughout this entire piece. Or we could look at A Little Priest from Sweeney Todd, which has wordplay and setups and subversions and delights all over the place. Another comedy song that is a little more on the delightful side is Master of the House from Les Miserables. The Tenardiers are really only funny because they are foils for the aristocracy of everybody else in the piece, but it's not really a laugh aloud sort of song. But audiences love it. For a more contemporary example, we have A Summer in Ohio from the last five years in that extended AABA format, which lands its joke so well because you know where the joke is going to be coming back, but it's done in a slightly different way, slightly different rhythm, or extended every time. It lands really well. And then if you want to look at a show that does comedy phenomenally in so many different ways, look at Avenue Q. It is filled with comedy songs. I mean, we've got Everyone's a Little Bit Racist, it, The Internet is for Porn, If You Were Gay, Schadenfreude, You Can Be As Loud As The Hell You Want, My Girlfriend Who Lives In Canada. I think I'm missing some even. There are so many great comedy songs in that show. It's kind of a masterclass. And if you want more examples of comedy songs, do check out that course because we deep dive into this a little more when we do this lesson. But now I will take a moment to point out one of my favorite comedy songs in all of musical theater, Officer Krupke. Officer Krupke falls in that halfway through act two placement after the, the darkest moments for the gang. These boys have to let off steam somehow, and how do they choose to do it? Through acting zany and putting on these characters of people in their lives and making the situations absolutely ridiculous. It's a moment of release for the characters as well as the audience, and that song always gets a standing ovation. Every single time. Quick caveat though, in the original movie it was moved to earlier in the story and it doesn't land quite as well because we don't get the major release of those characters that we get in the stage version. Okay, we've talked about a lot of things that we should be doing. Is there anything to avoid? Yes, there is. Number one, one joke songs. Now they can be done well, but it's very difficult to do. Most of the time one joke songs just go nowhere and become less funny the further along the song goes. Number two, the opposite of surprise, predictability. If your audience is guessing where the lyric is about to go, you haven't done your job well enough. Number three, songs that rely on the performers to make them funny. And number four, songs that are at the expense of your characters instead of having those characters being involved in the joke. Any and all these points can make it really dicey, and it's a hard thing to do anyway to write comedy, so if we can avoid these particular pitfalls, you've got a much better shot. Now you also may be thinking that comedy songs seem to have a lot in common with charm songs, and you're not wrong, but if you need a refresher on what exactly makes a charm song, then you can watch this video next. Otherwise, thank you all for being here with me today, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers!